morning, good afternoon, or good night to for everybody. We're in different time zones, so which makes it more excited, <laughs> I guess. So today, I mean, we I mean we have this. We're going to talk, of course, SBRT and SRS, and we're going to focus today on the planning aspect. I know that you have have lectures already in simulation, the symmetry QA and all that, but today is going to be planning. And today we're going to go through the beginning of planning. And the next week, next Saturday, we're going to basically go through planning, how to optimize and evaluate plans. And for that, it's going to be, it's going to be focused on Linux based SRS and SPRT. But today I'm going to talk, I'm going to give a little bit of history of, but very quick of what other methods of SBRT, SBRT, SRS planning we have in the, you know, Currently, so I, I always like to start with this picture because I really love it. I mean, it's like it looks like a SBRT. We all an, S, an SRS is a very very precise technique. It's not not like the picture. So we always need to be. I you know that's what I think. The physicist with the ruler they are measuring, and the physician ready to <laughs> shoot the radiation or the arrow in this case. And why the physicist, it looks so worried, even the patient, because it's a very precise technique, very high dose, like a very small number of fractions. So if there is no room to, for not a precise technique. So if we, if we look at the concept, and you all know this, a stereotactic body radiation therapy is refer, is refers to a stereotactic radiotherapy that is a procedure for treating extra clanier tumor with ultra high doses, it, they can go from six to 30 gray in a, half, in a hyperfractionated regimen, which is five or fewer fractions. And SRS, a stereotactic radio surgery, is basically the same concept. Basically, it's very ultra high doses, but in a single fraction, a stereotactically targeted radiation therapy. So the goals of SVRT is basically to ablate tissues within the PTV. So that's why, you know, those very high doses. Those in homogeneity inside the PT, PTV, not PYT, <laughs> was considered acceptable, potentially advantages, and not considered a priority in the plan design. So basically the hotspots or the maximum doses, they can go even go up to 160% of the prescription dose. And we are not concerned with that because we really want to kill everything. But we need to be cautious of that. And the main objective of the plan is to minimize, of course, the volume organ at risk or normal tissue that they are around the PTB because we're giving very high dose fractions, a very high dose treatment per fraction, and we definitely want to protect the ORs around the PTBs. So most SVRT has in general mostly been applied to tumors in spine, lung, liver, pancreas, kidney, prostate, any, any other part of it, like any oligomets, I would say, any other bone metastatic disease, we're, we're using that a lot. And SRS refers mainly for metastatic brain and also paraspinal tumor. We do a lot of single fraction paraspinal treatment, so that could be considered SRS. The conformation of high dose to the target bone Volume, together with the rapid fall off of the dose outside the target, they are the most critical issues or the more critical aspects of SVRT. And basically, it's very important because we want to minimize the damage to normal tissue. So an SVRT practice requires a high level of confidence in accuracy of the entire treatment delivery process, which is accomplished by the integration of all these aspects. Modern imaging simulation that you have a lecture already on simulation, why is so important? Because we need to make sure that the patient is very well immobilized. Treatment planning, of course, which is the, the main topic of these talks. And the delivery technology that you, I'm sure you're going to have up lectures on that. So if all these uh, aspects, they need to be looked at together when you're thinking on SVRT and SRS, because you cannot have a beautiful plan SVRT, but if you don't have a very good delivered technology or the patient is not immobilized correctly, then there is no way that you're going to treat very well or confident treating whatever you, the beautiful plan that you have in paper, let's say, and you're not going to be able to deliver with confidence. So 
The major characteristic of SVRT and SRS is, the, uh, as we said before, is a large dose per fraction, and they are delivered in fewer fractions, like even single fractions for SRS or multiple fractions, but less than five for SVRT. In general, but this is not always applicable, I mean, we normally, because they are small targets, normally we, we have well-circumscribed tumor so they're like very you know like 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 a nice sphere but sometimes we have treated a fractionation of 600 times five for larger tumors but also for example in the example of the on the right here that you have that paraspinal you can see that it's not a perfect circumference so you have like some shapes that we need to make sure that we cover everything protecting the, the normal tissue in this case is the coda that is right there. So we need to come out with planning techniques that they're gonna allow us to that. And the biggest also, and I'm sure you have talked about that when you were talking about contouring in SVRT in the previous session, is about the small or no margins that you use. Why we use why we're gonna use the small margin? Because we said that we want to protect as much as possible the organ, the normal tissue around the PTV. So if I put a margin of 1 cm or 2 cm, like a conventional treatment, then I'm going to, and here we're giving very high dose. It's going to be very, it's going to damage a lot of the normal tissue about the PTV. So the margins normally they go, they can go even as low as two millimeter, even one millimeter for SRS cases on the brain, the picture on the, on the middle spines two millimeter from CTV to PTV. And it, they can even go up to five millimeter. This is a lung case. Sometimes the, the margins can go up to five millimeter. But as you can see, the more you increase the margin, the more you're going to compromise the normal tissue. Around. That's what this is a very, very important concept. And it's basically the key also for planning, because when you're planning, you need to make start with the contours. If the contours are not reasonable and the margins are not correct, and there is normal tissues there very close, you're gonna have trouble with the planning. So those are very important concepts taking into consideration. And of course, and I'm not gonna go into detail because you have you have looked, you have half session on, on a simulation and patient immobilization, respirat respiratory motion management. Those are very, very important concepts when you are simulating the patient because you wanna have the patient in a very comfortable and safe and very in you know very well immobilized position you have to take techniques of respiratory motion in order to reduce the motion for breathing or to take into account the motion for breathing then also and I'm, this is something that you're going to be looked in the next session when you talk about delivery you need to have a higher frequency of patient monitor while the patient is being treated and this is done now there is many advances in image guidance during treatment. And then, of course, and I always like this, as we always train each other, S SRS and SVRT, when you, if you're not doing in your clinic, but you're some, it's something that you need to implement, you need to, after everything is done, after everything is commissioned, after everything is completed, the training to the staff involved to the to the treatment of the patient when it's built in, it has is is very very key because everybody needs to be aware what's going on. Physicians, even nurses, because nurses they need to deal these patients. Normally, they come with a lot of pain, so they need to know how to medicate the patients right before treatment. Radiation therapies because they are the hands on on the treatment, so they need to understand. And of course, physics with all the things that we do pre-treatment, post-treatment, within treatment. So I always put us at the end. <laughs> I'm a physicist, so, but actually we, we play a big role there because we need to make sure the machines are okay, everything is good, and then we give the green light to treat. So this is the part actually that I, I wanted to mention because we're going to base, again, we're going to base our planning techniques on the linac base planning and treatment. But I wanted to mention also there is a, a plenty of other type of technology that they're used currently in many centers to treat SRS and SVRT. So like the Siemens Primatron, the tomotherapy, gamma knife, salver knife, I'm sure you have heard about it or maybe some of your centers, you have this technology already. They can be used. And of course, then on the right, we have all the, the LINAC-based 
and these are all the main, the most, I mean, not the only one, but the most important vendor from Electa, Siemens, and Varian. But these Linux base, basically we have, we also have, they, they come with the KV capability and, and also in the Combin CT approaches. So these are, this is the big benefit because that's going to make a big difference for the delivery and the image guidance. Okay. But of course, CyberKnife and all that, they also have, you can do type of uh, controls during treatment. So and I'm not going to put too much emphasis on these slices, but I want to make sure that we have a concept that this is gamma Knight has been used forever. I mean, from long time in and from the 60s, I think it was the first time that they started doing gamma knife treatment. And you all know that this is a, a, a machine that has a, a, around 201 small fixed sources of cobalt 60. And they have focused emis, emis, uh, hemi uh, spherical distribution. And they also, those lines are designed via a cone, they have a cone diameter and they have these plugs, which again, we're not going to go into details, but that's the way that you conform the basically the fields if you want to the target. And the prescription doses for this, when we do plants in gamma knife, normally is prescribed to the 50% isodose line. And that has to be, it has to do with the cobalt 60 and the way that the machine is designed, these cones and the plugs. So the gamma knife, basically there, there is a helmet, basically that has, they have different diameters, 4, A, 14 or 18 millimeter. And normally to treat basically a lesion, you might need, and it's not that you might need, you will need multiple isocenters. Because if you look at the picture on the right, see the, the, these are the, the, a gamma knife give you like various spherical distribution per basically per small source. So in order if the if the target they're not in a sphere, so you kind of have to start putting different isocenters in order to cover everything. Just because they are larger tumor, they can be regular, and also that make sure this picture when I said untreated is. It's not the way that we're going to treat. We're not going to untreat a part of the, of the tumor. I just wanted to put it there because just to give you an idea, we need to make sure that we cover that untreated area. Okay. So basically in this picture, we will need a lot of more isocenters in order to cover that irregular shape. So this is, I mean, basically these are pictures, I mean, how the gamma knife is a superposition of beams, as I said before, and spreading the energy out, out generate steep tox gradient, because that's what we do with these, all these cones and plugs. And there is a frame that is attached to the patient that actually that defines your coordinate system. So basically that's a very, that is studying the simulation and basically when you, when you basically simulating the gamma knife machine, the patient to be treated. So this is, again, like I said, this is a, a, an example of how, the, how this LAN is treated. Doses are usually prescribed to 50% isodose LAN. And if, like you can see here, how many isocenter, how many, those number one, two, three, is the different uh, isocenter that we're going to be using in order to give 50% conformal to the shape of the targets. Dr. Um, Fianza, yes. quick question. Sure. Um, would you mind sharing maybe some pros and cons of using gamma knife versus yes. Linac base for of course. I mean, radio surgery? Yes. I mean, gamma knife is actually one of the pros, I think, is because it's a machine dedicated for brain. And actually, you have all these multiple sources, and you can basically treat... I mean, the treatment is a little long. That's a con. That's not, that's a con. But actually, it's very beneficial if you have that dedicated machine for brain, which is basically the. And normally, another another benefit is normally the physicians can design the treatment, the, the planning because it's very. I mean, as long as you activate basically, just to give it that way, and select the correct isocenters and you cover the with 50% your target, that's it. You, you design it and you treat. That's the benefit. The, 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 the cons, it could be that it's longer treatment time because we're talking about cobalt 60 energy. And some of the thing, it can be a little bit for the patient comfort because they have that frame and it takes a longer. So it's basically like a little, I don't want to say traumatic, but it's because it's a technique that is still being used that, it's a little more invasive, like Linux base, for example, or even CyberKnife. 
Okay. So again, I'm not going to go. The, you can go to, you can do an inverse planning. Actually, there are new ways and new systems now that you can basically, it's going to automatically do the plan for you. It's going to fill up the volume with isocenters and it's going to give you those. So that's the nice things now in the, in the modern times. The, the, uh, it does not involve those two volume constraint. And the, the plan can be, after you do this initial inverse planning, it can be manually tweaked in order to proceed. Again, because we, I mean, there are techniques, because we have irregular shape and also to protect the organ as free, you can, there are techniques to shield the critical structure. Basically, you basically inactivate if you want some sources coming when you're treating. So that's the way it's, it's basically, that's when the combination of this plant part and not apply at one or more isocenter. So basically you shield them. And then basically what it, what it does, it will give you a conformal uh, isodose through the target by protecting in this case, for example, is the chiasm that is right there next to the target, okay? Uh, if, Mr. Yes. Bounty, Jalil from Iraq is asking if there's any image verification for gamma knife before treatment at the same time. Not way. really, because basically you trust on your coordinated system and the patient is there and it's done. So there is no, okay. it's, there is no like, uh, like Linux base that you have the KVs attached yeah. independent of the being right. of the, yeah. What about the Icon gamma knife, the newest model of um, gamma knife? I believe that has that has actually yes that's true they have actually included a kind of verification i'm not very familiar because we never use gamma knife in our center but it's true and again this even gamma knife and cyber knife they have evolved of course the technology has evolved and actually they they, they are some type of imaging that you can do to verify treatment yeah wonderful thank you and then if, again, quickly, we go to CyberNight. CyberNight, basically, it looks, I will, I will always talk that it's like a mini LINAC because, but it's a LINAC that it moves everywhere. So basically, it's, a, it's basically, it's a robotic country, kind of like the, and it has this uh, circular cones and iris aperture. And uh, in typically, it's like 200 beam angles that you will use to treat some patients. And there is a 2D KV for setup and intrafraction money monitoring. Here you can see that in, in CyberNAR they, they have this uh, KV capability to, to check to check setups uh, and to verify to verify to verify motion during treatment. Again, in general, the collimators, they have 12 fixed collimator between 5 to 60 millimeters in diameter. And the iris is, vari is a variable collimator with a tung uh, tungsten blades shape aperture between 5 to 60 millimeter in diameter. Again, with all this combination co and collimator plus the iris variable combinator, you can shape isodoses through the targets. Most of the, I mean, these are the main, like basically have the steps to plan something with the gamma nav. So you basically need to select, select the image, the imaging center. And they're going to be feed usuals or users selected for other tracking nodes, contouring, like any other type of planning. You're going to have a collimator selection, which is a, a which will balance conformality and treatment time. And usually you will be using multiple collimators to achieve, to achieve this compromise. The beam targeting basically points randomly generated within and near the boundary of the target on the central axis of the beam in the beam set. And of course, there is this dosimetric optimization beams and amuse reduction. So it's basically to optimize the dose distribution based on use of the fine constraint. So if you think about the, the strategies for the treatment planning, you're going to have a fixed number of constraints points. You're going to use this shell structure to tune in the isodose lines, like inner shells, which are very, very small distance from the PTB to the outside, basically between 5 to 10 millimeter, just to constrain the higher isodose lines, which are the ones close to the PTB. And then you're going to have outer shells that you're going to con uh, uh, control or constrain the lower isodose because you want you don't want to, you know, you want to protect as much as possible the, uh, the normal tissue around. And use the, the, the thickness of the shells, they, they go between one and two millimeters. 
And then sometimes you're going to use isolation manual constraint points to fine tune the dose distribution when these shelves don't work very well, especially when you have ORs there. So as, as you can see, it's a little, it is kind of similar to basically a little bit we we'll go through, but it, it, it is a different concept because now you, again, like gamma knife, if you want to compare, you have to make too many entries because the gun is basically it's a it's a it's a robotic but it's a robotic country but it's a fix you know and then you you have to keep moving that so here are some examples of the isodoses that you can produce with a cyber man for example for the spine they're very conformal they're very nice you spare a lot the the normal tissue but and I will show you, see, in the in this picture, you can see how many entries, those little blue dots, how many beams, or how many times, the, like I said, even up to 200 sometimes for one treatment. And you can see here, for example, around the, the CORA, you, you cannot, and I, I will show you how we can achieve more concave isodose distribution about the core and core, especially for paraspinal, which is very important, with LINAC base instead of a cyber. I'm not saying that this is not correct because there are ways to trick that. But in this case, I wanted to show you that it's, you know, that it's a little more difficult to achieve that LINAC base. This is a prostate case. Actually, it's, it's a beautiful distribution. Again, the picture of the, the coronal side, you can see all those blue dots. It's basically all the entries that you're going to have through the body with the robotic arm. But then you can see how very nice and conformal the, iso, the prescription dose goes around the prostate, protecting the rectum, protecting the bladder, which are the most important organs at risk around the prostate. This is a liver med. Again, you can see how you can spare other things. Basically, that's I want. I didn't want to spend too much time at all, although we I talk a lot of it, but because we want to go now to lean and base. So, sure. if there is any questions, so maybe, yeah, yeah, there are actually a couple. So Ahmed is asking, what is the difference between cyber knife and lenac based planning? And if it is recommended for specific tumors, the the the, the big difference because the linac base you have a rotational gantry, and it's a, and that we can I mean and you can we're gonna go through now that you can use different technique like and we have the MLC collimators that are gonna be shaping those and uh, controlling intensity and shaping the the you know the the way in a rotational basis with and that is a basically that's the difference between the cyber because the cyber is like a let's say it's like a one head gantry yes we can move it everywhere but it doesn't go it doesn't move like the gantry through the and it does for for treatment we cannot do like a v map technique with a cyber mice because we can we need to move treat move treat move treat it's very quick but it's not exactly like occasionally different but Basically, that's the only difference because it's, that's what I said at the beginning. It's like a mini LINAC, basically, because it's basically, it's extra, uh, you know, it's a mega voltage beam, okay? The same as LINAC. So one other thing that I can see the difference is also the way, I mean, also the way that, I mean, we're more used to, to use LINACs to treat everything at this moment. So the patients even are more used to, Remember these patients, sometimes they can keep coming back for treatment with metastatic disease. So it's more familiar for them to be positioned in the couch of the LINAC that rotates everywhere. The couches of the, of the cybernas, also you can move it everywhere, but it's also, it's a different, it's a different technique. So basically I will say that it's like, I will always say again, nothing against a cyberna, but it's like a, ver it's like a mini version of a LINAC, you know? But that's that's what I would put it that. And Jalil is asking if it is mandatory to have fiducials in prostate treatment for cyber knife. For cyber knife, it's basically not mandatory. But if you are doing, if you're doing image guidance during treatment, actually, it is, it is basic. I don't, yeah, it is mandatory because that's the fiducials that they're very good surrogates to make sure that we control the movement in the prostate during treatment, and that happened also for this. <laughs> For example, like in our institution, we will 
treat SVRT prostate with fiducials. We don't do it other way because that's the only way. And there are other things, and I'll tell you that we what we've been using too, but that's a mo- the most important thing. So the answer is yes, if you want to control, uh, if you want to do image guidance. Very much. And Isam Leila from Morocco is asking, why is it that with CyberKnife, the majority of beams are from the inferior and right side of the patient? Do you think we can we lose in homogeneity and conformality with CyberKnife yes. versus Linac? Yes, exactly. And that's one of the cons, I would say, because you are a little more limited with the entries of the beam because you need to make sure how those beams are going to be entered into the patient. And then you have limitations. Of course, with the Linux, we do have limitation, but if the couch is at zero, you basically can enter from anywhere of the patient. And then if we start moving the couch, for example, for cranial cases that we have couch kicks. So basically we have like a ma- we have more degrees of freedoms basically with the Linux against the cyber nice. And that's a good, that's a good point because that's, that limitation makes it a little bit more complicated to make more conformal plans. And that's the picture that I show you on the spine. And I will show you later with the Linux what we can do about it. But for example, for CyberKnife is very, is very highly used for prostate cases. Why? Because prostate, you know, prostates in general, they're like, they're not as spherical, but they're a very, you know, nice, it's not a weird shape. And for prostate, you can get amazing conformal with CyberKnife while you also do IGRT and setup checks, basically KV setup checks before you treat. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And Rashid yeah. is asking, sorry, so many questions. Oh, no problem. Rashid is asking, how is it possible to confirm the tissue changes in CyberKnife in SBRT without combing CT? Well, that's why, yes, that's a very good question. That's why you need to, with CyberKnife, you need to be more careful with the surrogates that you use. For example, that's what the good question about markers for prostate. Yes, very important. Also with motion management, reading motion management, you might need to increase, I mean, use for sure, and PTVs basically that that encompass, the, the PTV will encompass the whole movement of the target and the margins might be a little bigger than what we will use with IGRT because of that. And yes, that's basically something that you need to pay more attention because you don't have all the capability, like you don't have a nice CVCT that you can do like you do for Linux, which you can see everything, even for a prostate case. You can, in CVCT, you can see how the bladder is being being filled. That impacts the, the, you know, the position of the pro- where, how the rectum, if it's full, no full, if it's well separated from the prostate and all that. So yes, you lose a little bit of that with the cyber knife. Awesome. Thank you. I think we addressed all the questions. Thank okay. So, much. so we, I mean, if you have more questions, I love the questions actually. So we can, you know, you keep monitoring yeah. and at the end we can, I'm sure mm-hmm. there's going to be more. Yeah. So now we're going to go directly to Linux based SBRT and RES. And I'm going to focus more on the MLC with using the MLC, not cones for SRS that some linear accelerator have the capability. So basically, most of the modern linear accelerators, they are using small leaves, especially in the center of the, of the whole bank of leaves. And uh, in general, you will only need one isocenter per lesion. There is no, you know, there is no way that, I mean, with because then we're going to use the degrees of freedom of counter rotation, couch rotations, MLC movement to conform the dose and the intensity. And there is more flexibility in techniques. So you can do static beams, like for example, the old fat, when we used to use a static field for brain metastatic, like 15 or 16 mean with a static, very simple frame, you get amazing plans. You can use dynamic conformation arc, which is DCA. You can use IMRT, you can use VMAT. These are all modern techniques that they are, they, that you know already for any, even for conformer planning, how it has changed our life as physicists, how to, they get and beautiful plants and protecting everything, tissues around, making very conformal to target. So with the Linux base, you have all these available techniques, more flexibility. But that's, if we talk about, it's a little bit uh, basically more, more advantages. 
So, and they're also like modern, some modern LINAC, they have this high definition multi-leaf collimator, which the leaves in the center, they're like 2.5 millimeters. So you can see how you can take advantage here. You have a picture of the small leaf, how, you know, treating those lesions. Of course, this might move because if it's uh, conformal, but you can see how advantageous that is compared to the five millimeter that lesion that is on the on the on the right. If you will get good dose, I mean good distribution too, because if you don't have this high definition, you will have five millimeter leaves in the center. But this is even better. So again, only one isocenter collision, and again you will have all these the same techniques that you're going to have for the five millimeter sleeve. That is this picture here. This, I want to make sure that we understand is five millimeters in the center and the leaves are one cm on the, for, this is for barium acceler linear accelerators. I know Electa and Simon, they have uh, different configurations. Sometimes I, I don't know exactly, but they do have the same for all the bands. And so those are things that we take as in terms of technology, we're taking that, we're going to take advantage of that because it's going to help us to conform the doses while we are planning. So contouring, I'm not going to go into detail because you have had a, a session on contouring already, but contouring is very important before you start planning because you want to make sure that, the first of all, the margins between CTVs, GTV, CTVs, and PTV, they are reasonable and they make sense with our concept of SPRT and S SRS. And because of that, you want to make sure that it's very important to contour all the targets or organisms around that. We don't want to, for, I mean, we never forget about this, even for conventional therapy. But for SRS or SVRT makes a big difference because remember, we're giving very, very high doses. We want to make sure that all these organs are protected with whatever constraints we have. For example, in the picture of the paraspinal SVRT, you have the PTV in red, the CTV in magenta. You can see the little mark, like two millimeter margin between both. The core is one of the biggest, you know, scare of this treatment. We need to protect that core to the constraints level, to the allowed maximum levels. The esophagus is around there, which is in green the light green, and then you have the lungs. The lungs, I mean, of course, you're not going to have too much dose, but in the area of the, the, the PTV, you need to make sure what is the dose, the low doses to those lungs. And then the heart, the heart is coming here, so the heart, we always contour it to Every contour needs to be done. For prostate, for example, the, we need to make sure that the rectum is there, the bladder is there, the urethra, very important, and the femurs also, because we have constraints for all those structures. One, something that I want to mention, and I don't know if this, uh, this if you see the, um, the image quality of the CT scan here for the prostate, it looks strange because we this is what we are using MR-based planning for, and this is a synthetic constructed from MMR. We don't do CT scans anymore for prostate. We do MR and we do a synthetic, basically, a synthetic MR to do the calculations and planning. That's what it looks like this. And also we use for SVRP process, which is something that is used in many places, just to separate the rectum to the prostate. There are these tal tasers, which is like a gel that is being implanted before simulation and treatment, that it all it stays for the amount, it stays for like a month or two, and then it gets dissolved. But actually, that's very important because it gives you a little more, it's actually the contour between the CTV, which is in green, and the cyan in the rectum that like contour is kind of like yellow, orange. I'm colorblind, so you guys decide the color, but the contour that is between the, the cyan and the green, that is the spacer. Actually, that's a great technique with SVRT because the rectum, you want to protect it with the maximum doses. And if you push it out of the CTV, at least, that's a good, it's going to make your life easier when you're planning and treating these cases. But again, this is the part that it becomes very important. I mean, you need to make sure while you're treating this patient, everything stays and looks the same as simulation. So that's what is important, CBCTs and any technique that you have to for image guidance during treatment with the usuals we use for prostate. Again, another important course, and I don't want to, it's about the margin. We talk about it, but actually I want to make it very, very clear that margins are one of the 
key components of this. The, in some cases, sometimes the city, the physicians agree to do the CTV the same as the, the GTV. So they don't add any margin. And then we have a two millimeter margin only from CTV to PTV. So that's what you want to target. Your, you're very limited to miss that vision. So you want to really make sure that you're really treating that correctly. Of course, uh, yes. Dr. Delo, there, Miriam is asking, how is a synthetic CT generated from an MRI? For an example? MR? Yes, <laughs> we do have, actually, there, I, I mean, we have, it's from the vendors of our MR scanner. We have developed protocols, image sequences that we need, and there is there are algorithms that they, they do it for you. It's not, I mean, it's a very, com- actually, it takes, it took us, like, for example, a year or more of finding the right MR sequence, mm-hmm. working with the vendor and the algorithm that is going to give you the right synthetic that is allowable for us to plan. So that's something that you need to develop in your clinic. It's basically, gotcha. we call it, it's a C, it's a, we call it an MR simula- MR sim. So we've seen mm-hmm. the patients there, but it's something that you need to work with the vendors and do a lot of studies and prospective studies of, Calculating, calculation, the algorithms, how it's going to look. So it is basically produced with an algorithm. Got it. And and from Iraq is asking if you use a spacer in patients that are treated with your MRL, in your MR LINAC. Yes. Yep. And there are two types of spacers uh, at the the moment. There are like some that all these spacers, they are MR. Uh, friendly. Basically, you can see them that, like if you've seen the picture before in the synthetic, sorry, you don't see it very, I mean, yes, you can see it, but in the MR, you see it perfectly. It's a very wide, it's, it, they're very, that's what they, we call them MR friendly. And now they have developed others that they are MR friendly and CT friendly uh, because you can even see them very well when you do the combined CTs now. So that's a good thing because we have, and then we can match and see if it's, because sometimes it, it might happen that the, the, the startups get an absorb quicker. That's what when we do this, that's what we don't want to waste time when we do this. I mean, we do the implantation of the, of the spacer, the MR treatment within the next days because you want to, but they stay in the body for like a month or something, but sometimes for whatever reason it might migrate, it might move, it can happen because I imagine that's the gel in that area that it could move eventually. Okay. But they are they, are, they have advanced a lot in the in the way that they make these spacers. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then again, here you have two examples of how the, the margin between CTVs and PTV can vary. And for example, on the, on the picture on the brain SRS, you can see how a two millimeter margin, which is normally what we do, between zero and two, sometimes one, it depends where it is. It depends if it's very close to a, or to an organ at risk. And then for the prostate, you can see here, this is again, our technique. And this is, there are some protocols about it. We, pro, the margin that we use between CTV and PTV is five millimeter all around, except in the, in the posterior part with, uh, to, when it's close to the rectum, we use three millimeters. So basically that's what you need to make sure that everything during treatment is there. So that's what we use for usual for like basically KVs during treatment. We have CVCT to make sure that that spacer is correct. We need to make sure that the rectal feeling is the same every fraction, that the bladder feeling is the same every fraction. And for that, you can create a techniques how to check it. Thank you. When, Just a quick yes. note, if everyone could keep their mute on, unfortunately, I do not have access to muting everyone, but if all participants could have themselves muted and then of course ask questions in the chat when you have them. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Then if we move to beam characteristic, because okay, when we're going to start planning, we're going to use beams. Okay. For sure. So most of, so basically one of the biggest characteristic of beam of how to plan things, depending the technique that you use, let's say if you're using like an IMRT technique, the addition of more beams, normally SVRT and SRS plans, you're going to have more beams that you will use, for example, for a conventional brain case. For example, a conventional brain case, you might use four or five coplanar, no coplanar IMRT fields, but if it's an SVRT because you want to create more conformality, you might need seven, 
and the non and adding non coplanar field will also be very beneficial because it can helps to increase the dose gradient at the boundary of the PTV. Another thing that is very in fashion now is to use flattening filter free, which they're called FFF beams, which because one of the advantages is because they have they they basically they have a higher dose rate. So that means like between 1400 to 2400 and 20, uh, 2000 centigrade per minute, which is a big benefit for treatment. So because the treatments are going to be quicker instead of the usual 600 centigrade per minute that we have for most of the, this is the normal that we are, we use at least in, the, in our in our linear accelerator. Here you're basically more than double. So the treatment time is gonna be quicker because the benefit here is that, okay, you're, you're gonna be beneficent. You're gonna be reducing the treatment time and it will help avoid the motion of the patient during treatment or motion of the organs during treatment. So the quicker you treat, the better, the better you do. And, but of course, and I'm sure you have seen it when they have explained the of small fields and all that in the previous chats. I'm sure you guys have talked about flattening field and field. There is, you need to, you need to do a, a, a full dosimetry, a, a pan in order to commission a, a six FFF field or a 10 FFF. And here, this is a, the reference. Actually, I put the reference here because it's, it's a good one. It, this talks a lot about flattening filter free. This is a document coming is a from that it was published on the um, uh, JACMP and it has a because it, it goes through most of the vendors and all the difference between the the, the FFF uh, fields between barium electron Siemens and how to deal with them and how to use them okay so that's very important also, again, we talk about margins. Dr. Dr. Blanche, yeah, yes. one yep. quick question. Rashid is asking if rect. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. If rectum balloons are useful for prostate SPRT, SPRT. we yes, they're used. We don't use them, but they are mm -hmm. being used a little bit. The only thing with rectal balloons, and that's what we when we were trying to see if we were going to use it, is the the reproducibility and the maintenance of the the basically how the balloon during treatment the balloon gets basically filled. But it is another technique of yes, and it's been used in many places, and it's okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Saju is asking if you could explain more about the spacers and how do we insert them? Yes. They, basically, the way that the, 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 it's been done in an OR, because it's at the same time that the patients, the physicians, the radiation oncologists insert the fiducial, the golden seeds within the prostate that we're going to be using for tracking during treatment. That is the time when they also put the spacer and it's like a, basically like a syringe with the, the gel liquid that it goes in there and it's in place. And basically they, they use fluoroscopy actually to see how, because they need to go to the right place. They need to go to the, they need to see the right amount. And basically it's a procedure that the medic, the radiation oncologist do. Wonderful. In, in and one. Yeah. one more question in brain SRS. For GTV to PTV margins, what are the uh, are there different margins based on the treatment machines? For example, zero millimeter for gamma eye, for mm -hmm. um, two millimeter for yeah. for example, phase. yes, good question. For gamma knife, normally they they will contour just a GTV because again, it's on it's in there. You define and you can basically treat each lesion with that, so they don't need much margin. Sometimes maybe once millimeter. Cybernas, it goes, it's the same as Linux base between one to two millimeter from GTV even to, this is for example, in this case, is the, I, I put it wrong, but it's the, 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 the cyan is the GTV and the margin from GTV to PTV is two millimeters. Sometimes for, for example, and that is depending protocols for prost, for breast cancer metastatic disease in the brain, because there have been many studies that there was a lot of necrosis because of SRS treatment. So we don't leave any margin. We put zero mark, we treat basically the GTV. And then one millimeter is for cases 
Linux base or even Saverna that there is, if let's say if this tumor was super close to the brain stem, we might leave one millimeter margin. Or if it's very close to the chiasm, we won't leave um, one millimeter, but no more than two. So GTV to PTV for brain cases, Linux base or uh, Saverna, it goes from zero to two. Great. Thank you for that. If you could go back to flat and filtered beams. Yeah. Suha is asking if reducing the time is the only advantage of for FFF beams and if we could explain the use of, and Miriam is asking if we could use that, if you could explain the use of FFF beams, triple F beams. Yeah, I mean, basically reducing time is one of the main thing because of the reducing the dose rate. But actually flat and fill, I mean, basically you, you, you go now, the, the beam goes it doesn't go through the flattening filters anymore. So there is one less thing that you need to worry when you are looking at the configuration of the beam. But of course, because of that, the field is not flat. Basically, there is a different type of symmetry that you need to do. So I would say that that's an advantage because it's a one less component that you need to worry about on the on the on the continuation of the of the production of the beam to whenever it gets released, and that's a good advantage too. It, it's been said also with with a flattened filter free, you also have better umbra uses of the dough. And remember, for these for this type of treatment, we do use the penumbra to treat because we and we will go that in a minute. How to what are the margin between the field edges? and the targets and how we, we check that. Okay, so that's a good benefit also of the flat and fill filters. Wonderful. There's a question. If we have more than one lesion, what is the maximum distance between them that it's allowed for using a single ISO for all? Normally, that's a good, very good question. For example, let's let's keep the image of the brain. Let's say if there was an image, let's say that this is an SRS going to 2100. And then there is another lesion, probably, let's say 1 cm apart. So you you can use one isocenter to treat both as long as you can, you can leave. Like what we look, we look at the 1800 isodose because 1800, you look at the total distance of both lesions together. Let's say if they go to tattoo to more than 2 cm, if 1800 covers everything, I'm okay. But if the lesion is 3 cm and 1800, there is not a break between the 1800 and, and the two lesions. So then we will use two isocenters. But in general, with that's the biggest advantage with the LINAC base, that even if they are close or far away, as soon as you use the center leaves, you can use one isocenter to treat multiple lesions, which is the beauty of the LINAC base. The center leaf meaning the, the 2.5 or the five millimeter, depending on the LINAC that you have. So basically against not against, but compared to Cybernight, that's nice because Cybernight you will need to treat one lizard with the multiple uh, with one isocenter, then move to the next iso and treat the other one. Here you can do one isocenter for all lesions that they are within those that I can catch all the lips with the center lips, which normally, for example, for a high definition MLC, you have up to ACM with the the, the mini lips, the 2.5 lips. So it's a good matter. So Lesions that they are, let's say, one side of it. There are many techniques how to do it, and that we will we will talk a little later, and even next week, how to design the beams between. Because I'm gonna next time and next week, I'm gonna we're gonna optimize and design fields. How, what is the best for each anatomical side? But basically, that's the advantage of that. So wonderful. And, yes. Go ahead. Sorry. One more thing, for example, that I want to, let's say, if the lesions, especially for brain, are super, super small, meaning like less than one cm, even close to five millimeter, for that, we, we use one isocenter per lesion because we might be need to use a dynamic compensator because VMAT, even with our small field of symmetry, we cannot get good patient dosimetric UA if we do VMAT. For that, and for that, because we, for DCA, you just need to include one lesion per isocenter. That's the only time. So we, you may, let's say you have one very small, far from the other ones, but, and then, so the other ones you treat with one ISO VMAT, and this one you do one ISO with DCA. So that's another way to treat two ISOs. Got it. 
Thank you. Sahar is asking for for Linac base. What is the optimal margin for long for a long case? For Linac base, optimal mm-hmm. margin I would say five millimeter from CTV to GTV, uh, to PTV, five millimeters. That's the normal. Because remember, I mean lungs. I mean you need to start thinking about the motion of the breathing, which you will take care. Let's say if you treat VIBH. Okay, then it's nice, but it's still, it's, you know, patients can be on the DIVH well treated, but they can, you know, and it's been seen that two millimeters is not enough because two millimeters can be the drop between the, you know, the, the being on the DIVH breathing trace all the time. So five millimeters better. Even if you don't do DIVH, that you do a 4D CT scan, that you create an ITV, that the ITV encompass the whole movement again. The patient can take a deep breath or it can breathe very differently during the treatment. So two millimeter has, it has been proved that it's not enough. So it's five, it will be there, except for example, if it's a tumor that is attached, let's say to the chest wall and is very close to the core, maybe you can leave two millimeter closer to the core and the muscles because you know that that's not going to be attached. But if it's floating in the land, five millimeters will be my, my indication. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mahmoud is asking, how do you evaluate the gradient and conformity index for two PTVs with different prescription doses? For two different isodoses? We normally, for example, what we do is we create this gradient index structure, which is a CM around the PTV. It's like a, a CM structure. And we looked at the dose of 50% within that divided by the dose of 100%. So basically is the volume, sorry, of the dose of the night of the 50% isodose and the volume of the of the 50%. And that will give you the conformity in because basically you need the, the short answer is make sure that your 50% isodose land is very conformal to the target. For brain, for example, we normally want to have it within five millimeter of our PTV. So basically between between 100% and 50%, they should be five millimeter. Of course, it's not gonna be a perfect circle five millimeter. You're gonna have a little cloud there, but that's what the conformity in there will, will tell you. The gradient index. Awesome, thank you. One last question at the, sure. at the moment. Jishan is asking, is it necessary to do intrafraction imaging? And if yes, what are your what are your recommendations? Intrafraction imaging is okay. Like for example, there are many ways to do it. For example, if you have accelerators that they allow you to take this intra, like they're called a KV during treatment or intrafraction monitor, the IMR or something like that. So you can basically, it's very important. For example, for prostate cases, we want to do it because we want to take these KVs every time the patient saw the KVs. They're outside within the treatment too. And they take every, let's say you can take every 200 immunes, you take a KV and you make sure that the fiducials are inside the circles of the, the contours that we did from the seat, well, the original city. So that's something, and it's very important because we want to make sure that that doesn't change. And we have, have cases that for whatever reason, the anatomy moves. And so the, 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 the therapist will stop the treatment or you have automatically stopping the treatment. And then you keep treating when they go back to the same. So I personally think it's very important. If you don't have that capability, you can you just use KV between fields. For example, you, you treat one arc and then you take KVs again, make sure that everything is okay. Then you continue with the next arc, KVs again. So it depends the machine that you have and the capability. But I personally think it's very important because it gives you a set of a, a nice set of mind. And that's KV, but also we're talking only about KV, but I just don't want us to forget about their other type of intrafraction monitoring, like eyeline RT, which is infrared light, especially for brain. For us, we do use that. We make sure that. Basically, we capture the image of the face and that doesn't move, of course, within something. And it's a good, there is a good correlation between that and what happened inside. But that you can do, as you can see, you can do for brain because things don't move in the brain that much. You cannot use that for a prostate because you're not, what, if the skin, you know, whatever happened in the surface move, which will, will move with breathing, nothing to do what's going on inside the body, that things can move because the organs move. So for that, you need fiducials and KVs.
Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mullah Hussain, did you have, would you like to make a comment on? Uh, thank you for, for the lecture. And just I want to say that about the space OR, we used to have the thrust, the transrectal ultrasound guidance, and then we insert the gel material between the rectum and the prostate under the guidance of the ultrasound. Uh -huh. By the radiation oncologist, not by the intervention radiologist. Regarding the fiducials, we usually ask the intervention radiologist to make it for us. So they are also using the same, the trust transrectal ultrasound, and they will insert the fiducials. It's similar to the procedure when taking the biopsy, also usually right. with... With this. So just like this one to highlight it, this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, very good. Thank you. Okay, so if we continue, like what I said before, we how important the margin between the contours are, but then how important the margins are for, you know, for the selections of the beam when you're planning. If the beam margin is close to the beam penumbra between five to six millimeter, Normally, that's what we normally have for like regular cases, conventional. So we leave at least five, milli, five to six millimeters margins between the PTV and the jaw setting or the MLC setting. So there you're going to find homogeneous PTV doses. The maximum doses are going to be around 110% of the prescription dose. And the dose fall off outside the PTV is slow, as you can see on the picture on the right. So that's for conventional radiation therapy. If we want to use the penumbra basically to treat, basically of the fields to treat. So if the margin is much less than the, like between zero to two, which is what happened in SVRT and SRS, basically the, 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 there's going to be an homogeneous PTV dose. Basically the, the, the Dmax can go from 125% or more. But as we said before, does allow for SVRT and SRS, especially for SRS, because we really we're doing an ablation to that tumor. And again, remember they are very they're small tumors, small margins, so you're not causing any problems uh, inside the, the tumors. And of course, if we take advantage, if the margins are small, the dose fall off outside the PTV is very fast. So that's why that is the main difference. So this is the concept that you, we use to when we do SVRT and SRS plans to basically use margins less than the penumbra, basically between zero to two millimeters for the beams and the PTV. Okay. Here another characteristics basically the jaw. I mean sometimes the the jaw openings are twice as much when compared to collimators and zero and 90 degree. So this is something that we have seen. Again, there are different techniques and we will look more next week when we go through optimization and planning per disease, what is the best angles and the best collimator. Because you want to use, for example, as much as possible, the center lips, see that there are lips here that they are the, the smaller size. Sometimes and to, you want to capture as many targets as you can with a, a BMAT field. So you might, it, it will be very beneficial uh, rotating the collimation, for example, to 45 degrees or 30, between, not zero and 90. So but because of that, the jaw opening is going to be more sometimes because now you're collimating, you're making bigger jaws. So the there's going to be more leakage, those in the in superior, when, where you have these green arrows, uh, in the superior and inferior beyond the PTV. But that's something that, again, is something that we will account for it. So it's the benefit of using one isocenter and collimating for, a, for, all, for all lesion or for a bigger target is superior for, than the leakage that you're going to have on this leak, because that's that is being included within your algorithms of calculation. It takes into account the leakage that you have between the leaves. Also, see for a collimator zero and 90, in, this is the same case. Of course, they are, I mean, it's better in terms, you can see here that the, the, the field size are much smaller than the 45 collimator, but there is gonna be leakage of the of sometimes of if you have park leaves inside the field inside the job of that they're unused and sometimes that's where you have the problem and that happened for example with something that leaves that they will never open so you we want to make sure that they are parked outside the jaw not inside because if not that leakage it will be there all the time 
again, it's not a huge problem, but you want to have it outside. So those are things that you need to take into account when, for example, when you select collimator angles and fields, especially for a VMAT, for a rapid art technique. Okay. And again, next week, we're going to go for, again, for each anatomical site, what are the, the most beneficial beam arrangement, collimator, and we're going to go more in details of optimization and how to evaluate the plans. Okay. So this was just a good introduction to that. In, if we go to dose calculation, in SVRT and SRS planning, large dose gradient exists within the PTB, which allows rapid dose fall off outside the PTB. So because we want to spare normal tissue. So the dose calculation uses small, normally we use small dose grids, two millimeter or, or less. And of course, I mentioned this here that you have had a lecture already in this small field of symmetry. That's very important when you are, basically, if you need to start an SVRT or an SRS program to make sure that your machines have been calibrated or a condition on all the algorithms for small field of symmetry. I actually put the reference of this. This is a TG report from, from the APN, which is basically is a guide. It's basically is a very concrete and very a report about megavolts photon beam dose symmetry for small field and non-equilibrium conditions. It's a, it's a good one to read, but I'm sure there is a lot out there. There's a lot of publication, but this is a good report. And this is from 2021, so it's very recent. So, and when we go, part of the planning is also what is the prescription that we're talking about. So this, again, this I have put the most, the ones that we normally use, and I guess some people use too, but it can vary. For brain SRS, you can go depending on the sizes of the tumor between 1500 to 2200 in one fraction. If it's SVRT brain, we're going to be talking about 900 times three or 600 times five. For example, in our center, we have treated the 903 with transition to 1003 at the moment. So we're in the, in the we're transitioning, we have a trial pro, a protocol basically, and just to make sure if we're gonna adopt that instead of 903. Paraspinals, again, we normally do 2400 times one. There are other fractionations, some people go higher than that, lower to two. And SVRT, again, we go 900 times three, 1000 times three, 600 times five, depending. And this depends on the size of the target. Or, for example, how many vertebral bodies are we treating? If we're treating one, you can treat 2400, depending on the, the pathology and the conditions, too. But, but if you treat two and more, sometimes we, we use 900 or 1000 times three. But if it's like more than five vertebral bodies, four to five to six vertebra, we might be doing 600 times five, okay? Lung SVRT, there is a big range also of doses. You can use 750 times A, 1,000 times five, 1,200 times four, 1,800 times three. The last one, it depends the location of the tumor. If it's, for example, if it's a tumor in the middle of the line, isolated, we normally will go to 1,800 times three because there is nothing only the lungs. Yes, you need to protect them, but there is nothing big other or around there. 1,200 and 1,000 is when they start being attached to the chest wall or close to, like, you know, on the, on the posterior part, close to the, the core. So that you don't want to take the risk to go to 18 times three. You may choose between 1,000 times five or 1,200 times four. Prostate PRT, currently we are, our doses are 500 times five for post brachy cases and 800 to 900 centigrade uh, times five for uh, interprostate. And 800, 900 is, we normally go to 800, but we're, we're doing a boost, a simultaneous boost of 900 to the compromised area of the prostate with imaging detected. We normally go to that to 900 times five simultaneously. It's an S SIB, basically. Yes. Thank you. Quick question while we're on SVRT for prostate. So what is asking, what about the urethra inside the prostate? How do you how do you count the, that as your OAR? Yes. The, the urethra, that's an excellent question. When we went to M planning, so we have we developed, we have an MR, a sagittal, we developed a sagittal that we that defines a urethra 
excellently. And because we use MR's MR base, and so we can define the urethra very well. And we don't, we just use that urethra, the, the physician will come to the urethra and we just use that to keep the constraints basically within the limits. We don't put a Foley catheter, but if you do not have that, most of the places they use Foley catheters for the urethra, especially for the definition, but then you will need to use it for treatment as well to make sure that it's the same. So that's the compromise sometimes that you have to do. Again, that if you don't have the access to have MR planning, you can do it with CT planning perfectly, but then we recommend the use of Foley catheter, which is what we used to do before we went to MR only. Thank you. Miriam is asking if for simultaneous boost, the GTV in the prostate, is that a part of flame trial? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Jens, but I'll let you finish. And okay, I, I have probably a couple more okay. slices and we're Wonderful. good. So this Thank is you. actually one of the last ones. So um, in general, the dose prescription, the planned doses are often pres- prescribed to lower isodoses between 80 to 90. Remember, gamma knife is 50%, but linac base, you can do 80 to 90, but for example, we do 100. But again, that's as you want to define your how do you define the fall off and how to prescribe your cases and of course there is a lot of because SBRT and SRS brought up a lot of new thoughts about what's happened radiobiologically because it's a complete different world than conventional therapy that there is a lot more studies on that and we have a lot more knowledge on radiobiology models for conventional fractionation. So there have been tons of studies about the normal, normal, uh, normalized total dose, NTD. And these biological indices are useful to compare different fractionation schedules because you're not, you, you know, we have most of the, mo- the quad- for example, the quadratic model is an approximation for SBRT. It works better for conventional fractionation, but BED will help us basically think conventionally what happened on an SVRT treatment. So, but again, make sure that you are, you know, there is a big caution here and there is a lot of studies going on about the linear quadratic model is an approximation. And I'm sure you all have heard about the quant protocols that we have here that they, those are, and we talk about next time because that's what we, we do those evaluation. They have recommendation of those limit for organs at risk and coverage, PT coverage, taking into account the, the NTD comparison with conventionals and all that. But that's something that is being in the works. So that's something that I wanted to mention and we will spend more next time. So next session, we will go through uh, treatment planning, how to evaluate, and I'm going to go to cyber, I mean, not all the size possible, the most important one, brain, Paraspinal, prostate, and lung, mm-hmm. how to evaluate and optimize these plans and uh, how to best get the best plan. And I'm sure then there are le- sessions after how you're going to deliver these plans and that you will be talking more about IGRT and all that. So as a conclusion, just I want to emphasize the most important things here, large, large dose per fractions delivering fewer fractions. Remember that single fraction for SRS, small or no margins, in the contours between zero to five millimeter, the use of FFF beams, higher dose rate. Those calculations in general, you will use um, two millimeters of lead uh, dose creeds, millimeters of less dose creeds. Small field of symmetry, very important because you can do the most beautiful plan in paper and your treatment planning, but if you're not capable to deliver that and your machine is not a, has not been accounted for that, it's not going to work. So your patient specific QA is not going to go well, and then you're going to be in trouble. And the planned doses are often prescribed to lower isodoses. You can use 80%, 90% of isodoses. These are the two references that I mentioned before. 